Hi, this is Pat Love with Pat's Two Cents. As you can tell, I'm snuggling up in my late husband's shirt. <laughs> I'm still sentimental, what can I say? Okay, anyway, thought I was done, so I had to cover up so I wouldn't scare you guys to death. Bad hair day. But I want to share this with you, and I hope this is encouraging. Many of us struggle with different things. My struggle is lack of organization, procrastination. Everybody has their area of struggle. And there are others who struggle with sexual addictions, whether it's pornography, homosexuality, whatever the case may be, there are struggles. Then there are even yet others who struggle with anger, who struggle with a temperament that they don't understand because there's so much chaos and so much confusion going on inside. It's difficult to make heads or tails out of what's going on in your head and your heart. Well, let me share this with you because sometimes we think that God does not have patience with people like you. Mm -hmm. And the reason I'm saying like you and not like me, I already know I'm a mess. But I'm putting it on you because I know God has patience. Look how long he's been putting up with me. Look how much he loves me. I know it. But many of you don't know that. And as one of my neighbors used to say, oh, I'm here to tell you. God loves you so much more than you will ever, ever believe. I don't care how frustrated your parents get with you. I don't care how much your husband or wife has given up on you. I don't care what your kids think or don't think of you. Remember, God loves you. Now, sounds like a nice little churchy cliche. When you're sitting up there coming home from work and you're opening up your laptop and you're sitting there being drawn through your flesh to masturbate as you look at all these images that are plentiful to look at. And you're feeling ashamed. You're feeling like you are an embarrassment to God. How could God love a messed up son or a daughter like you? How could God be bothered? He wants you to live holy and look at you messing up again. There's a difference. You know how you know that there's a seed of righteousness that's been planted in your heart when it bothers you. The ones that it doesn't bother are the ones that can come home as like, hey, playtime. No. It's not that way with you. It is a struggle. Now, let me share another thing with you. Some of you who go through changes trying to deal with your anger issues, your temper, people who just get on your nerves and, and you don't see why you're so intolerant and why you're so cutting and you don't want to be abusive, but you know in a lot of ways you are. And you're steadily asking God to help you, to heal you, to remove your anger, your rage. God knows where that came from. He's not blown away by your dilemma. You are. God understands it. Listen, this is the time when you recognize you have these issues. Go to God and ask him to show you where some of this stuff comes from. Ask him to show you where your fear comes from, where your anger comes from. Do you know God wants to counsel you? Do you know he wants to deliver you? That's why he came to set the captives free. Are you not a captive? 
He didn't come for the well baby clinics. He came for the sick, the broken, the bruised, the messed up, the jacked up, the sorry. Like you and me. And his work is never done. He finished the work on Calvary, but he's still working. He's working on you, and he's working on me. And as long as we remain in his care, we will be a finished work when he's done. But the thing you cannot allow Satan to encourage you to do is give up. You cannot give up on yourself. Don't you dare. I'll come to haunt your behind. Don't you dare give up. That's not. See, you're comparing God's love to your mother's love, to your father's love, to your brother's love, to your uncle's love, to your cousin's love, to your man's love, to your woman's love, to whatever. And what their love was not. You're comparing God to that. No. God is love. People were born and shaped in an iniquity. And the average Joe or the average Joanne doesn't even know what real love is. You go to the source. See, many of you deal with this because you're not only addicted, you're empty. And you know what empty things form? They form a vacuum. Have you ever rolled a vacuum over the floor without looking and you start hearing all this stuff rattling in the thing as it's sucking it up? You know why? Vacuums are indistinguish indistinguishable. They're, um, the word I'm looking for, they don't, uh, oh, come on, what is the word? They, they're not picky. I got to break it down like that. I can't think of the word. They're indiscriminate. Thank you. They're not picky. They will suck up anything that's in its path. Such are some of you. You will suck up anything in your path because you've got that big of a hole in your soul and it's empty and it needs to be filled and you're longing for love. You're longing for purpose. You're longing for significance. And you don't realize that what you are in essence is a sick, afflicted soul that can only be satisfied by God, who is love, who is all the love you need. Mm. Be encouraged, you guys. God is not watching over you with a big hammer ready to bash you upside the head the next time you blow it and the next time and the next time and the next time no god is for you god knows how broken you are god knows how fragmented your spirit is how confused your mind is god knows that you don't even know who you are god understands that when people don't See, I could tell you, oh, if you commit this sin or that sin, you're going to hell. I can tell you that till the cows come home. But that's not what a sick person needs to hear. A sick person needs to hear, you can get well. You can break free. And you can get all the love you've ever wanted. All the love you've ever needed. That's what a sick person needs to hear. Because the sick person knows they're sick. They're not trying to put up a front. They know they're sick. They're ashamed. They're, 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 they want to hide. They're so frustrated and disgusted with themselves. Because they have the can't help it. They're not enjoying the can't help it. They enjoy the nut. They enjoy the intrigue. But they're not enjoying the can't help it. Because it makes them feel less and less of themselves. They think less of themselves. They, their self-esteem just withers away. The more they do, the more they fail, the more they yield. God 
God's love does not wither. I said it in the other video and I'll repeat myself. God does not abuse broken people. God does not beat someone who was already beaten down by life. God does not snatch the hope away from a person who is hopeless. God is not a cruel task master. God is a loving father who understands. When the Bible says that Jesus is touched with the feelings of our infirmities, the Bible is telling the truth. Jesus is compassion personified. You go to him. That's where your help lies. Please. God bless you. You are loved by God.